Hey guys, what's up? This is Cody Miller coming at you today with a PC gaming video. So I've been playing games on the PC since as long as I can remember. In fact, years before I even owned a console, I was playing games on the PC. In fact, the first time that I ever played Halo was actually on the PC, and I still have a copy of it. In fact, this is my copy from when I was like 12 or something. PC gaming, it's pretty great. Today we have Steam, which is something that wasn't a thing, and it really helps with content management, and even though, you know, some things do slip through the uh, Steam green light from time to time, for the most part, we get some pretty good quality content off of Steam. But PC being PC, means that, for the most part, you can make a game that's completely shit and sell it at Walmart or at a local Starbucks. However, that doesn't even mean that that's the worst thing that can happen. Enter Nickelodeon's Nightmare. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom for the PC. Now this was a game that I adored as a kid on the Nintendo GameCube. It's great plays great. It's a wonderful game. The PC version, however, is the worst rubbish that you could have possibly extracted out of that game. This isn't even a port. This is an entirely different game with the same title that just, well, it, it absolutely sucks. So first of all, let's go ahead and actually dig through the booklet because those used to be a thing. Stalling the game, running the game, the introduction. People can pause that and read that if they want to. Game controls, using the mouse and the keyboard, functions, functions, playing the game, the main menu, main menu, game screen, power-ups, characters, Spongebob Squarepants, levels, um, and in here, ironically, are all the levels that you can have, so um, take a good look at this. This is all the levels that consist in this game, and tell me at what point, if you ever played the GameCube version or the PlayStation 2 version, any of this looks familiar, because it doesn't. Do you have credits? All the people that you're going to want to send nasty emails once you've purchased this game. Oh yes, at this time, All Grown Up was also a thing. And you can also watch all the latest movies. Um, Charlotte's Web, Charlotte's Web 2, Hey Arnold, uh, Little Bear, which is not like Brother Bear. It's, it's totally different. It's Little Bear. You got Jimmy Neutron. You got the Wild Thornberries movie, the Rugrats movie, and the Rugrats in Paris movie. All very nostalgic looking at this. This is a blast from the past. So, of course, you can soak up all the adventures. Um, yeah, just some cartoon books and stuff and more things to check out. And this is pretty much more of an advertisement manual <laughs> than, uh, than it is anything else. But just by looking at the Rugrats Go Wild... Uh, game ad, it looks like it's more entertaining than this. But, for anyone that remembers the video now, I used to want one of these so badly, but I never got one. And now I'm glad that I don't, because, man, that would have been a waste of money. Look at that little screen. Could you imagine watching something on a screen that small? But we got Spongebob and Patrick riding on a clam. Alright, so let's go ahead and put in Spongebob square pants battle for bikini bottom at some point. Oh man. Yes. Next. Oh man, look at those tight graphics. Alright, so here's the entire plot in 30 seconds. 
Plankton creates a bunch of robots with a robot building machine to rule the world, forgets to turn the switch to obey Plankton. All the robots then defy Plankton and run rampant. Meanwhile, Spongebob and Patrick are playing with little toy robots, wish upon a shooting clam that robots were real, go to bed. The next day, robots are running rampant, and Spongebob thinks that he has to fix it. Oh yeah, and Plankton went to college. I went to college! Get lost. It's weak. Alright, so from the game's menu, you have a total of five areas to select from. Each five areas contains six different mini-games. And starting from here, we have the Mermalair, the Downtown Bikini Bottom, the Kelp Forest, the Chum Bucket, and the Flying Dutchman's Graveyard. Now, I'm only going to explore the first level of each game because, to be quite honest, this buttery smooth 15 frames per second is just way too buttery for me to handle. I mean, seriously, why is this thing lagging? This thing plays Fallout 4, 1080p, medium setting, 60 frames per second. Why am I lagging at 800 by 600 playing mini games? Joe's rest home at once. Hello, Mermaid Man, Barnacle Boy. Oh, All right, since I've already showed it, I might as well go ahead and do Cave game. Jumper first. So this is pretty much as basic as a game can get. Um, what you have is these slow moving platforms that you click your mouse to jump from platform to platform straight up. And of course it, it sucks. Between this game running at like 12 frames a second and the fact that it only responds to your mouse input about one third to half the time and it always has to do these animations which slow down opportune times while making you wait on a platform longer because these things you just move so slowly and god forbid that it doesn't uh oh oh it, i actually made it so let's just head on down to bikini bottom and try out so, Traffic Jam is like Frogger if Frogger was the worst game you've ever played in your life. Um, the idea is to guide Spongebob with your mouse um, and collect these stupid magic items while these boats try to murder you, essentially. <laughs> I, I don't really know what to say much more than this. It's just a crappy version of Frogger from like Frogger the Great Beyond or something. So what happens in this level is essentially your plane catches on fire because of the robots or whatever, then it crashes, and Spongebob falls from the plane, catching his pants on clothes, running out of pants, thus giving birth to serial killer Spongebob here. Come here, you little... Whoops. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, just take a second and think about that for a minute. I want you to actually think about what SpongeBob just did. Sorry about that little friend. Okay, so with serial killer SpongeBob scene now over, let's talk about this mini game. So this mini game is pretty much you swing from vines that seem to have no constant speed and just swing at random with a mouse that is barely responsive half the time while a robot snake that actually does nothing intimidates you and makes it look as if it's going to bite you all the while you have creepy little eyes every now and then passing out of the forest but this mini game essentially just continues going until you collect all the items and if you miss an item, it just keeps going and showing them again until you collect them. Right, so what happens in the chum bucket? Are we going to get to fight a giant robot Sandy in the boxing ring? No, unfortunately in this case this is the PC version. And the only thing that happens like that is when you get to take a quiz to release Sandy from her cage. The Spongebob trivia quiz. Who wouldn't like that? 
Now we're going to play Sneaky Feet, which again is the first part of the entire Chum Bucket, just the first level. So Sneaky Feet is actually probably one of the better games that comes included on this disc. Um, essentially all you do is you collect keys to open doors, and then collect more keys to open more doors, until you eventually collect all the items. This one actually makes sense. And even the robot enemies that follow you actually have some logic to them. On an even better note, rarely does the game drop below 18 frames per second, so that's a huge improvement over what I've seen so far today. And it's actually somewhat playable. I mean, the input even follows pretty well. So in Capture the Flag, Spongebob is role-playing as a pirate. Here's Mr. Krabs calling for his money or something, and then he goes around for some reason capturing the flag and placing it in its proper spot. This is the only one that kept me entertained long enough today to actually complete it, so I guess so far that's quite the improvement. So the whole premise here is that, again, you go around and collecting treasure, however, this time you're actually able to pick up flags and move them back to their appropriate spots, which is actually the whole premise of this level, is to, for whatever reason, return four different colored flags back to where they belong. Meanwhile, you avoid uh, robot pirates, I guess, that um, they, don't, they don't actually chase you or anything, they just wander around and if you come into contact with them, they kill you. Actually, it sounds a lot more boring now that I'm describing it, but for whatever reason, this one actually kept me entertained long enough to actually complete it. And since I completed that level, I can go ahead and show you the one that comes after it. This one here is quite reminiscent of Chip's Challenge for me. I played that a lot back on Windows 95. Um, basically, the whole premise is that you kind of push these boxes around obstacles to get them to fall into the hole. And I played this for a little bit, but ultimately, again, like the rest of this game, I just I just couldn't do it. I was too bored. In fact, you know what, maybe just to show you why I'm so bored, uh, let me go ahead and show you 15 seconds of this just completely uncut without me talking, and then maybe you'll understand it. Now, if you thought that modern games had bad options, just check out this options menu. All you have is story mode, story text, sound effects, and music settings. You can't even change the screen resolution. The most redeeming feature about this game is actually all the demos included on the disc. Now, of course, they're all optional installs, and you have to install them individually, but this is a great redeeming feature. Enter your name here, and we can start the game. You know, it's pretty bad whenever a demo included with your game is actually playable, runs smoother, and is just overall completely better than the game that you just sold. I mean, that's a pretty bad sign. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video there. So if you like this video, go ahead and, you know, give it a like. Um, and if you really liked this video, go ahead and tune in next week when I review Breaking All the Rules. Now, I actually haven't played this one, so I have no idea if it's good or not. But, assuming from what we saw today, between the Rugrats demo and SpongeBob SquarePants being complete garbage, I say there's a 50-50 chance that this is going to be complete garbage. But I guess we'll have to find out.